Welcome. It's great to see you again today. We are excited that you have joined us as Found of Life Worship Center. This is a great light. And we are a ministry that is located in the Madison Danville area. If you want to check us out, we are at www.folwc.com. Today we are finishing the second part of this series of on Psalm 23. We've got a long ways to go because we're still in verse 1. But the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. And so without further ado, we're going into the sanctuary right now for this teaching. Why? I told my son this, and I tried to hammer it into him. I said, what's the, pro what's the, what's the commandment with promise, Alex? He said, love your parents. <laughs> Why? Because it gives you long life. <laughs> Learn it, boy. <laughs> That's what we learn, to love your parents. Why? Because it's a commandment with a promise of life. God is not going, to, God, when you walk with him and honor your father and mother, when you do those things, God has covenanted with you that he will bless you, that he will hold to you, that he will care for you, that he w the, and that if it's your time to die, then it is your time. But if you're walking outside of that ark of safety, then you're not guaranteed that life. Now, even in your life, your days may not be long, 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 but it will be as if the Father had wanted it for you. You know, sometimes people ask, well, why do some people die younger that live for God? Well, here's the thing. Maybe they were so pretty, God just wanted to bring them on home. I don't know. But it's up to God. It's up to God. We, but we hold to the truth that God is sovereign and that not even a bird falls out of the sky and he doesn't know about it. He knows all about your life. He knows about your pain. He knows about your worry last night and the worrying that you were doing and the fretting that you were doing and the pain that you were doing and the fear that was creeping into your chest and it was grabbing a hold of you. He saw that and he said, if you just trust me, I'm going to take you through that. I'm going to take you through that. I'm going to be beside you. I'm going to stick closer than a brother. I love you. I care for you. And you don't need to be afraid, for I am with you. Amen. That's for somebody right there. Amen. Do not be afraid. Do not fear tomorrow. Do not be afraid of what the future holds, because the one, as we say, it's kind of cliche but it's so true. The one that holds the future is holding you. Why are you, why are we, I don't want to just go at you. I talk to myself as well. Why are we so quickly to walk away? Why are we so quickly to, to not have faith? Why are we so quickly to look at the scenario and the surroundings that we have? I don't know why. It's human nature, I guess, in some way, sinful nature, I guess. But at the same time, God is patient God is kind. His mercies are new every morning. And when you have really fouled up the next day, there is mercy for you. There is grace for you. There is hope for you. There is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. Go ahead. Praise God. Give Him praise today. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Now you see, you see, I, God, God cares so much about us that He does not want any person to ever, ever, ever experience the, 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 the darkness of this world. He wants you to be so lost in Him that darkness may surround you. And the Bible says something that you'll have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And they'll, people will look at you and say, how can you be joyous during a time like this? Because my Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I, I have no other thing to, but to realize that He is there. Isaiah 40 verse 11 says this. He says, He will feed His flock like a shepherd. And He will gather the lambs with His arm and carry them in His bosom and gently lead those who are with young. This beautiful thing tells us 
that there are times that He feeds us, He picks us up, He carries us when we need help. How many times have you said, the only way I've got through it is because my Master carried me. My Master carried me through this. I should have died. I should have lost my mind. I should have gone crazy. I should have went in fear. But my master picked me up and carried me. My little girl, she's, she's, she's shy. Man, she's ferocious. She's got a temper. And she has this, if she gets mad, she just stamps that foot. And I thought, I know, I thought, my wife said she gets that from you. So when the last time you saw me stamp my foot like that? I've never stamped my foot like that. But she, she is, but there are times where I can see that she gets so frustrated over something. And she's mad. And she doesn't know how to deal with it. And so, as her dad, I walk over to her. I pick her up. And I just hug her as hard as I can. The baby, she, she doesn't... A child doesn't, doesn't understand the process of, of bringing themselves down. You ever seen a child that is not able to calm down sometimes? A child's just all worked up and she just can't do it or he just can't do it. And why? Mommy comes in and we hear, mommy comes in with this voice. Oh, it's okay, baby. All the way up here. Why? She is allowing the child to process in her mind. She's allowing her... To that soothing word to help her move this pain and this fear and this whatever it is that's preventing her from being at peace. And she's in the mother as she helps her move this thing that's stuck in flight or fight mode. She's stuck there. She doesn't know whether to fight you or fly or flee. And when she does this, when she does that, then the mother comes in and scoops her up and just hugs her and loves her. And the brain begins to realize, I can do this. On I can own. do this on my own. But you know what the frightening thing is? Is that it, it, it doesn't necessarily form on a, without help. And sometimes children need help to help that form. And there are people that grow up and that never forms. And they don't know what to do. And, they don't, and every time they hit, they get hit with something. They either want to fight or run. And why? Because they haven't learned that everything is going to be okay. That God has a plan. That God carries you when you need Him to carry you. That He soothes you. The Bible says in Zephaniah chapter 3 that He sings over you. He quiets you with His love. The Bible says... He is mighty to save. All in that passage in Zephaniah 3. And He's there to carry you through this thing. He will feed you. He will nourish you. He will tell you everything's okay so that you will learn that when you go through trials, the same God who never changes, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, who got me through this, who got me through this, who got me through this, is going to bring me through this, and I'm going to be okay. Amen. And you begin to learn that God is your shepherd and you're going to make it. That God is your warrior and He's going to, and you're going to make it warrior, not warrior, warrior. And He's the one that's going to fight your battles. He's the one that's going to lead you. He's the one that's going to carry you. He's the one that's going to nourish you. He says, carry them in His bosom. He's going to bring them up to His chest and hold you gently lead you and realize that there are times that you just need thumped but God doesn't thump you because you need to be gently led through this gently led through this Ezekiel 34 verse 11 says for thus says the Lord God indeed I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out mm, one of my favorite verses in Isaiah says that you shall be called sought out. Ekklesia is the Greek word for church. It means called out. 
you're part of a church, it means that he sought you out. You're not here by accident. You're not here because you decided this morning that I was going to get up and go to church or I decided 10 years ago that I was going to get saved. No, it's because you came to a church and the Holy One sought you out. He called you. He wooed you. You were stuck in your sin. You were stuck in your pain. You were stuck in your horrific life. But God sought you out. He said, I'm not going to leave you there to die. I'm not going to let you go. I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to seek you. I'm going to pursue you. That's, I can't give it away. That's the, end of the, that's, that's the end of the psalm. But I'm going to pursue you until you either say yes, Lord, or flee from me. I'm going to seek you. You're not, those that become part of a church aren't here. Not, they're here because of their, their will. They made up the mind, I'm going to follow Christ, yes. But it's, it, it's like trying to say that you can get married without having a spouse. It doesn't work that way. There has to be mutual you know, affection for each other. We don't have arranged marriages in this country. There needs to be a little bit of wooing that happens. You know what I mean? I mean, at least it has to be one date, right? I don't know. However that works in your life, how it worked for you, maybe you saw your spouse from across the room and you said, baby, let's get married, and you didn't even know her name. I don't know, but that's not the way it usually works. It works in the sense that there is wooing, there is affection. God draws you by His Spirit unto Himself. But this Greek word for draw is like, drawing water from a well and his mercy God shows you how wonderful God shows you how beautiful God shows you how magnificent he is and his utter beauty pulls you unto him and you keep saying I, I got to go down this path but God says but here is my love I got to go down this path and, and God, I, I don't deserve you. And God says, but here is my grace. God, I, I need to go down this path. And I, I, I'm going to fail. And God says, but here is my mercy. And he shows you. He woos you. And he brings you unto himself. And he says, if you just give up and surrender... I'm going to pull you out of that well. I'm going to draw you unto myself. Just let go and let me, let God, just let go of the past. Let go of the things that are pulling you down. Let go of the things that hold you to this world. Let go of those chains and your master, your shepherd will take his rod and draw you out of that pain and draw you out of that sorrow and break forth out of that bush and you will be free today. He seeks you. He seeks you. He sought you out. You came to the church. You got saved in a church because the master sought you out. Because you, you, he put the mind, in, he put it in your mind if you would just seek me, if you would just follow me. And he reveals himself to you and calls unto you. And you surrendered and said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. I will follow you to the ends of the world. I will follow you, O oh God. I will follow you because you sought me. You sought me. The Bible tells us that God loves us while we were still sinners. That means we don't deserve it. God loves me. God loves you while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were all stuck in sin. We were all stuck in the, in the iniquity. And he, and he had every right, every right to let us go. And yet his mercy wouldn't let him. His love wouldn't let him. He sought you. He calls to you. He speaks to you today. Verse 12 says, As a shepherd seeks out his flock, on the day he is among his scattered sheep, so will I seek out my sheep and deliver them from all the places 
where they were scattered on a cloudy and dark day. Mm. I will seek you out of all the places. There is no sin that you have committed that God doesn't go seeking you out. There is no drug, there is no alcohol, there is no lifestyle that God isn't down there going after you. We throw people away long before God throws people away. We say they're no good long before God ever says there is all the places where it's cloudy and dark and they don't see a way out. They don't see a future. They don't see hope. They don't have these things. But God is there with the light of this world shining it out there. Will you come to me? Will you seek me? Will you find me? Will you bring? Will you come to me and have hope? All the cloudy and dark places he's there john re reiterating this john 10 11 i am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep he finds you where you are he finds you in that point of you are bound to this world you are bound to all these things he finds you and the enemy says they belong to me. I, they deserve hell. And the shepherd steps in, but here's my life. Take my life instead. And I stand there stuck in this world. I stand there chained to sin. I stand there gone and never ever able to escape. I stand there no way getting out of this prison cell. And he opens the door and says, you come out. And I'm coming in. And I am free, and He's in chains. I am set free, and His life for my life. He gives it freely to you. He gives it freely in a way that changes, that literally calls forth change within your being. He begins to create you all over again. There is a... The ark of safety, we, I hear me say that phrase from time to time. When God seals it, it means in Hebrew that there is atonement. And these that are in this boat, they're safe. Mm. Your sins have been atoned for by the blood of Jesus. He covers you and he says, you get into this boat and you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're going you're gonna to survive. 1 Peter 2, 25 tells us this. For you were like a sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. Me and you, we were. What's the problem with us sheep? We're dumb. We will follow any old thing. You know what I mean? Any old wind of doctrine shows up. Hey, that sounds good. That looks great. Any old thing shows up. And I, and we're, we're, we follow fads. We follow trends. We follow all these things. And he says to you, he says, just have peace. Just have peace and return to the shepherd of your soul. The one that walks with you. The one that keeps you. Lastly tonight, I want to finish with the last phrase. I shall not want. I shall not want. In Hebrew, this is imperfect tense. And the idea there is that never at any moment at any time shall I ever want. And the word for want means lack. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall no not ever lack. Ever. I will never, and I'm not talking about 
you know, writing a check on faith, the money's not in the bank kind of thing. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. God doesn't work that way unless he told you to do that. And that's a whole other thing. But the, you, what it means is everything that you will have need of, he shall supply. And sometimes it's not, we we want we want things that we don't need. We want things that we we don't need in our lives. We want, and sometimes we say, God, I I want the storm to stop. And God says, but you don't need the storm to stop because if the storm stops, you're not going to learn what you need to learn in the midst of the storm, and so you need to stay in it. Bible says in one of these verses I don't really care for, but it's in there, so you got to live it. He chastises those he loves. Hebrews 13, not one of my favorite ones. You don't see that hanging on pastor's walls, you know? It, you don't see that at the bookstore right next to the, the, the prayer shawls and stuff like that, the pictures of Jesus as a shepherd. The other one over there says he chastises those he loves, you know, and with him out there with the rod beating on the sheep. That's not the one you look at. But there are times that God allows struggles and trials in your life because you need it. I need it. You need it. We don't like it. It's like my boy trying to get him to eat vegetables. I don't understand what's wrong with that kid. He was born and he loved all the vegetables. And then one day he just decided he didn't like them. And I said, you've been eating them for three years, son. Why aren't you eating them now? I don't like them. And Helen, he doesn't like them for three years since. But I don't understand it. And we, we look at him, and you, we have those mind things. You sit at the table until you eat. Chastising, making certain that he does something that he needs, but he doesn't necessarily want. When we recognize that God takes us through things that we, that we need, that, and we don't realize that we want them, I mean, excuse me, the other way around. We have things that we want, and God takes you and says, I, this is what you need. Because he's got a vision and a thing, a, a destination for you. You want to see his destination? Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 says this. Verse 16. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. Verse 17 says this, For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to the living fountains of waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's where you're going. That's where you're going. Paul says the little bit of struggle I have in this life now listen, when he gives that litany there of all the things that he says, when he goes through there and he says, I've been through this and been through that, none of us have had rocks thrown at us till we're dead and left for dead on the outside of the city. None of us have been through that. And he, said, and he calls it little bit, that little bit of trial that I've gone through in this life. I, I, I don't even count it. I don't even compare it. It's not even close to the glory that is set before me. That is right there. God is going to wipe away every tear from your eyes. Psalm 34, 9 through 10 says, Oh, fear the Lord, you His saints. There is no want. There is no want to those who fear Him. Did you hear that? Psalm 34, 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you His saints. There is no want to those who fear Him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall, shall not lack any good thing. And lastly tonight, Philippians 4, 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is your shepherd. You shall not want. Amen. Let's stand. Let's pray.
Lord, I have come to the end here of this first opening verse of Psalm 23. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters today. I pray, God, that they would receive in their spirit the call forth, the anointing that God has for them, that you have for them on their lives and their hearts. You have, you have everything ready for them, Lord. And Lord, I pray today that your strength would be manifested in our weakness. Isn't it amazing what God does for us? The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. We shall not want. And I pray that these words have been encouraging to you today. I pray that Christ comes into your room right now. And I pray that Christ delivers you from any anxiety or fear. For God has a plan. God has a purpose. God has a ministry for you. And if you want to check us out, it's www.folwc.com folwc.com and we invite you to be with us on service this Sunday service starts at Sunday school at 10 o'clock and then worship at 11 and later on at 6 30 that night is our service for Sunday evening and I believe that we here at Fountain of Life Worship Center we've got a mission that God has placed us on and we encourage you to be part of that and we ask for God's God's strength from you we pray that you pray for us that as we continue on in this ministry, that God would be with us as we go forward. Once again, thank you so much, and God bless you.